When people think of the Dark Ages, they probably imagine cold, gloomy, candle-lit castles and shadowy monasteries full of mumbling monks. Of course, just because they were called the Dark Ages doesn't mean they weren't well lit, and medieval England wasn't all it's cracked up to be. That being said, here are 13 creepy things that were considered perfectly normal in medieval England. Number 1. Deflushing Bodies Sometimes people of high status, including kings, died far from where they wished to be buried, and their bodies would need to be transported to their final resting place. This undertaking was easier said than done in an age where a horse and cart was the most sophisticated form of transport. Due to the issues of lugging a rotting corpse across the country, the medieval people played fast and loose with the idea of what constituted a body. Sometimes, the entrails of the deceased were removed and buried near the place of death. The body would then be stuffed with aromatic substances and transported in a container. But the most common way of moving the body would be to dismember the corpse and boil the parts to loosen the flesh from the bone. Only the bones would then be taken to the waiting tomb, with all the other bits buried on site. Number 2. Contemplating Death Death was more accepted in medieval times as infant mortality was high and life expectancy was short. Ideas about death were much more public and it was not thought of in the same way as today. Death is inevitable, and instead of fearing it, medieval people just hoped for a good death. The medieval concept of a good death meant knowing that death was coming. A drawn-out demise gave people the chance to have the last rites administered, forgiving them of their sins and the English of the Middle Ages all hoped for a long death at home surrounded by friends, family, and a priest. If someone died suddenly and was unprepared, it was believed that the deceased might end up in purgatory or hell, as they had not had their earthly sins forgiven before they passed on. Number 3. Devising Horrific Ways of Killing People During medieval times, public execution and torture were common in England. As well as beheading, hanging, and being burnt at the stake, medieval people were experts in coming up with hideous ways to kill people. For the crime of treason, you would be hung, drawn, and quartered. This execution involved being tied to a horse and dragged to the gallows. When you got there, you would be hung and disemboweled, while still alive, which was a possibility, before your entrails were thrown into a fire. After this, the body would be beheaded and quartered usually done by tying each limb to a different horse before they were spurred to run in different directions. Another method of torture and execution was crushing, where the accused head would be placed in a device that slowly crushed their skull. Other methods including being boiled to death, impaled, sawn in half, and having your limbs broken while strapped to a wheel and then left to die. Number 4. Reopening Graves this practice was discovered by archaeologists, who first assumed that grave robbers had disturbed the graves. However, further investigation uncovered that during the early medieval period, it was common for relatives of the deceased to dig up the coffin and remove sentimental items, such as brooches and swords. The graves were usually disturbed within one or two generations, long enough for the corpse to be a skeleton but not so long that the wooden coffin was fully decayed. Other precious items were often left with the remains, such as gold or silver pendants, and objects that were taken usually had no monetary value. From these findings, archaeologists concluded that family members were taking keepsakes. Sometimes the corpse was manipulated, body parts were removed, and a dog was added to the burial in one case. The motivations of this reopening of graves are unknown but it is clear that the line between life and death was more fluid than it is for most societies today. Number 5. Transy Tombs You may be aware that many medieval English nobles had stone effigies of themselves on top of their sarcophagus. Usually, these statues showed the deceased at their finest and as if in a peaceful slumber. However, around the time of the Black Death, a different trend became popular. Transy Tombs depicted the subject as a decaying corpse. These were carved as skeletal remains beneath the shroud, or sometimes graphic images of the deceased being eaten by worms. Number 6. Cruentation Given that we have established that medieval people were pretty comfortable around death and corpses, this one may not seem so weird, but it is creepy nonetheless. 
In the medieval period, forensic science was a far distant dream, so they had to rely on other methods to determine the guilt of a suspected murderer. The medieval people believed that a corpse still contained a spark of life and that it would react to the presence of its murderer. Medieval courts would make the suspect touch the body of the murdered party, and if the body spontaneously started to bleed, it would be taken as proof of guilt. Nowadays, knowing that blood sets within 12 hours of death, forensic scientists think that if the body had been dead long enough, a liquid called purge fluid may have built up in the lungs and leaked out of the nose and other orifices when poked or jostled. Number 7. Trepanning Many questionable medical practices were common in the medieval period, but trepanning is probably the creepiest. This treatment was used to cure various issues, including seizures, headaches, mental illness, and skull fractures. It was believed that drilling a hole in the skull would release whatever was causing the affliction. Anesthesia was hit and miss, with some mixtures containing a deadly amount of hemlock, so some physicians conducted this procedure without it. Surprisingly, seven of the eight skulls discovered showing evidence of trepanning also had signs of healing, suggesting that the survival rate of this procedure was actually pretty high. Number 8. Child Marriage For the common people during the medieval period, marriage was usually just a case of two people agreeing that they were married. They did not need any form of consent. Sex made a marriage legally binding and was enforced through the lack of privacy and the fact that everybody in your neighborhood would know your business. Medieval children went directly from childhood to adulthood, skipping the teenage years entirely, and the age you could get married was 14 for boys and 12 for girls. The majority of people did not get married at this age, although most girls were married in their teens and boys married in their early 20s. Royalty and nobility, on the other hand, had their own rules. Both boys and girls were strategically married from an early age, for example, David II, King of Scots, was married at the age of four to a seven-year-old Joan of the Tower. But these strategic marriages were often even stranger than making two children marry each other. Richard II was 29 when he married Isabella, the six-year-old daughter of Charles VI. The marriage could not be consummated until Isabella was 12, but Richard died before she came of age. He was not the only English king to marry a teen as child brides were pretty common when conducting a truce, and there was no minimum age of marriage for noble families. Number 9. Animals on Trial This practice was both creepy and truly bizarre. These serious and official court proceedings saw animals being put on trial for their behavior. Sometimes lasting for months, these trials attempted to prosecute dogs, donkeys, pigs, rats, and even insects. The reasoning behind them was that any crimes committed by animals were the devil's work, and leaving them unpunished would allow the devil to meddle in human affairs. Pigs were the main offenders and were often executed for the murder of young children. But the animals were not always the accused, and some of the weirdest cases involved bestiality. In one instance, a donkey was the victim of unwanted sexual advances and was found innocent due to a convent declaring she was a virtuous animal. Number 10. Nursery Rhymes Some creepy things about the medieval period are still around today, although many may not be aware of their disturbing origins. A surprising number of nursery rhymes originate from the medieval era and have some pretty dark meanings. While the source of ring a ring a rosies ring around the rosies in America, has been disputed, it may be linked to disease and death. ring a roses is thought to be a skin rash while carrying a pocket full of posies could refer to covering up the smell of sickness. Other dark rhymes include Lavender's Blue, which is about a man trying to get a woman to have sex with him, Oranges and Lemons, which ends with a prisoner in the Tower of London getting beheaded, and London Bridge is Falling Down, which some speculate to be about a Viking attack, and others claim to be about child sacrifice. Number 11. Miasma Mask this creepy-looking mask is intrinsically linked to the Black Plague. However, there is no evidence that it was worn during the height of the Black Death. Its first use is dated to the 17th century, after the Middle Ages ended in England. Nevertheless, it is often seen as an integral part of the Middle Ages, so it is worth spending a moment on. Reminiscent of some kind of scary bird, the mask actually had a practical application. 
the beak of the mask was stuffed with aromatic herbs, as medieval physicians believed that bad smells, which they called miasma, caused disease, and pleasant-smelling herbs could neutralize their effects. Plague doctors also wore goggles, long coats covered in scented wax, breeches connected to their boots, gloves, and large hats, some of which they wore during the Middle Ages. All of this was an attempt to stop them from coming into contact with the disease while treating afflicted people. Unfortunately for the doctors, these extreme outfits did not provide any real protection for the bubonic plague, and many of them contracted the disease and died. Number 12. Surgeon, Dentist, and Barber were all the same jobs. We see specialist doctors for specific issues nowadays, but this was not the case during the medieval period. Many people treated themselves, knew herbal medicines, and had a rudimentary understanding of healing and midwifery. However, during the medieval period, the idea of studying medicine and human anatomy was evolving. Many women with knowledge of medicines were put to death during the witch hunts, and men had started to take over the realm of healthcare. But many of the people who set themselves up as surgeons were not actually trained. Dentistry had a similar haphazard approach, and teeth were sometimes pulled by the local blacksmith who had the tools to do it. The emergence of the barber surgeon started in monasteries where monks were required to have shaved heads. These barbers developed a knack for using sharp razors and scissors and began assisting in bloodletting the sick and conducting surgical operations for injured soldiers. Today, many barbers still display a red and white striped pole outside their shops, which is said to represent the blood and bandages of their former patients. Number 13. Cat Burning In medieval times, cats represented everything evil. They were linked to the devil's spirit, witches, vanity, and female sexuality. As such, cats were tortured, beaten, and burnt for fun. While we pass the time watching videos of cute cats playing pianos and generally being adorable, medieval people invented many ways of setting cats alight as a form of entertainment. Cats were suspended over or thrown onto bonfires, strung from maypoles and set on fire, or drenched in flammable liquid before being set alight and chased through the town. Modern cat lovers can take some solace in the fact that this cat killing probably made the plague much worse as there were fewer cats to kill the rats carrying the plague-bearing fleas throughout Europe. Did these things creep you out? If you know any other creepy things that were accepted as normal in medieval times, let us know in the comments below. To learn more about medieval history, check out our book, The Middle Ages, a captivating guide to the history of Europe, starting from the fall of the Western Roman Empire through the Black Death to the beginning of the Renaissance. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.